Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. This is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. I'm here to help you find the answers to the most frequently asked questions from my clients about self-directed retirement accounts. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And on today's Ad Mail, three superb questions from three superbly smart individuals. One regarding buying a real estate in an IRA. The second, dealing with 1099s and opening a brokerage or having a brokerage account for an IRA LLC. And the third about hiring an employee in your IRA LLC. Can you do that? So really think you guys are going to enjoy today's episode. Uh, I think these are three great questions um, that will probably uh, trigger some more uh, interesting thoughts and hopefully lead to more uh, interesting questions that you'll send in. And you can send in questions anytime to info at IRA Financial. Just say ad mail or ask Adam and just Jot down your question. You could just hit us up on social media. We get a lot of great questions on YouTube. Just send in a comment, a request, comment, question, whatever. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, we're here for you. Just let us know. So without further ado, let's get started. First question from Stuart B. of Winter Haven, Florida. Stuart wants to know, can my personal trust do a joint venture with an IRA to buy real estate? So great question. Um, a personal trust is essentially treated as personal cash since I assume you're the beneficiary or at least someone in your family is the beneficiary, kids, spouse, and you're the trustee. So it's a disqualified person. So you know you can't send money to a trust or do a loan to a trust. But we know that based off the Swanson case, a 1996 tax court case, that an entity only becomes disqualified when it's funded. So so long as you fund a newly established LLC, simultaneously the same day with IRA and personal trust money. And then at that point, kind of close the LLC, don't add any more money, do not make any additional capital contributions. At that point, the LLC is a disqualified entity. But if no new cash is going in and there's no salary or commissions being paid to disqualified people, the entity will stay intact and the disqualified prohibited transaction rules should not get triggered. So yes, Stuart, so long as you do a co-joint venture between your IRA in your personal trust, you don't take a salary. Hopefully you can get a third party to manage the property, kind of keep it as passive as possible. Do not add any additional capital contributions to the structure. Now you should be good and you should not have an issue from a prohibited transaction standpoint. So that would be really the only way to structure a deal between um, a personal trust or personal cash and an IRA to do real estate. Second question is from YouTube. Uh, I have an IRA LLC that made an investment and now the bank is saying that they're going to issue a 1099. Is this right? Did I do something wrong? So what's a 1099? A 1099 essentially lets the IRS know if in the case of an IRA, you take a distribution. Uh, but in the case of a bank, they made 1099 when they feel like uh, money has left the bank account and gone off to uh, an individual. So in this case, what is going on is you have an IRA LLC that made an investment. You should not have gotten 1099. The bank should not have 1099. It does happen. So what does that mean? Well, ultimately, based off the substance of the transaction means nothing, right? Because as long as the money didn't go to you or any disqualified person and it went to buy real estate or invest in a fund or do a hard money loan to a non-disqualified person, you got nothing to worry about. Now, we've had to help clients over the years and basically answer questions by mail from the IRS and, hey, Joe, hey, Jane, we see you um, have a 1099. We see that there is uh, money sent to you of X dollars. Why didn't you report it on your tax return? And that's where, as a custodian, we get in and um, help you respond, let you know that, no, the IRA made the investment. Here's proof of the investment. We're the custodian. We do all the reporting for the IRA. Uh, we'll attest to that. And then it goes away. So the, the substance is more important than the form. Yeah, the 1099 may have got issued inadvertently or erroneously, but the IRS is always going to follow the cash. And so long as the cash went to the investment, it didn't go to you or a family member or any entity controlled by such persons, you're good. You have nothing to worry about. Uh, it does happen occasionally where 
It's like a letter writing campaign that we have to help with. Explain to the IRS that it was an investment and the 1099 got filed erroneously since the LC is owned by a tax exempt party, but it always gets resolved because at the end of the day, the IRS always follows the cash. And as long as the cash doesn't go to you or any disqualified person, you have nothing to worry about. Even though the form was a problem because the 1099 was issued inadvertently, the substance is what matters. So thank you for that question. And again, we're here as an IRA custodian. We have also a wonderful consultant service, which allows us to kind of provide these types of services to our clients, which makes us unique in the space where not only we provide these types of services, we also do accounting services like um, 990Ts for UBIT, 1065 for partnership returns, 5500s, 5500 EZs. Uh, we can handle pretty much everything, except we don't do personal taxes. Sorry. Otherwise, we do it. Third and final question of today's podcast is from YouTube. And this person wants to know, can my self-directed IRA LLC hire an employee to manage the real estate investment? So generally, yeah, I would rather you not hire employees. Well, before I make that bold statement, let me just um, go back for one second and say, you cannot hire any family member or yourself to do anything in your IRA, right? You're a disqualified person, parents, children, spouse, daughter-in-law, son-in-law. You can't hire such person to do any work, even if it's necessary. You shouldn't do it either. Now, you may be able to do some service without compensation if it was reasonable and necessary, but to pay someone, you should not pay yourself or any family member to do anything. Now, what about hiring a third party to do something? The reason I'd rather you not hire them and rather just treat it as an independent contractor is if you have an employee your IRA LLC looks a lot more like a business than a passive activity. And the problem is if you generate business income and it's owned by an IRA, you trigger a tax known as UBIT, unrelated business income tax, which has a tax rate income threshold of 37%, which is hit at a very low level, 30, uh, but 15K. Whereas if you treated this investment passively and got rental income, and you hire an independent contractor to handle the property or do whatever you need to do, you have a you have not an argument, you have a case, it is a passive investment, and there's no UBIT. Whereas if you have an employee, the IRS can say, hey, Adam, you got a business here. This isn't a passive activity. Why? You have an employee on payroll. So you're running a business. It's a real estate business. And therefore, you should pay UBIT on the income. The rental income is not passive anymore because it's attributable to a business activity. So that's why for IRA LLCs, I'm not in favor of hiring employees. Certainly you can't hire yourself or a family member, a lineal descendant, but let's say your brother or your sister who's not disqualified, wants to hang around and maybe do some work, hire them as an independent contractor. I mean, if you are running a business, then you know you, you will have to accept the UBIT tax. If it's over a thousand dollars in net income, the tax rate can go pretty high and pretty quickly up to 37%. Whereas if it's an independent contractor, um, the case is obviously it's a passive investment. There's no business. Um, therefore, the rental income goes back to the IRA without tax. Now, UBIT's only triggered in three instances. One, use a non-recourse loan to buy real estate. Not happening here. Use a loan to buy stocks or an asset. Not happening here. And third, you invest your IRA invests in a business that generates business income. Well, if you have an employee the IRS could always make the argument that this real estate business is a business. And it's not or no longer a passive activity because you have an employee. Whereas if you had an independent contractor, the argument set that clearly this is not a business, it's passive, it's just collecting rent. I just need someone to mow the lawn, you know, clean the pool. It's hired a bunch of people to do that. But if you have an employee on payroll doing this stuff, you have control over, eh, it kind of looks like a business. Now, the IRS attacked it you have a much more difficult time, uh, whereas they're not going to attack a situation where your IRA owns an LLC, hiring someone independently as an independent contractor, where the LLC does not have control over such person, you know, to do chores around the house. So there you go. Another ad mail in the bag. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Hope you learned a few things from it. I know I did. Uh, I thought these questions were great. Thanks. Barry, the producer of the podcast, for putting this together. Really appreciate it. Um, and again, send the questions in. I have a lot, a lot of really cool, interesting questions that are um, coming. They're coming live soon. Just check this podcast out. It drops generally every Thursday, weekly. Uh, I've been doing this, you know, almost four years. So um, hopefully you've gotten a lot out of it. And I, I've got some great feedback, so I appreciate it. But if you have questions, comments, good, bad, hopefully not too bad. 
I'm always trying to improve, always trying to get better content to help educate everyone. You know, let me know. The only way I can get better is uh, through hearing from you guys. But uh, this is for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned something from it. And uh, thanks for hanging out. Otherwise, um, come back next week um, and take care. Have a great day. Thanks for uh, listening.